Mr. Shove said to me, I don't think your current bank balance is a true indicator of your level of intelligence. I was happy to hear that. He said, I think you have plenty of talent and ability and that you're much smarter than your bank balance indicate. And that turned out to be true. I was much smarter. My question to him was, then why isn't my bank balance bigger? And he said, you don't have enough reason for accomplishing great things. If you had enough reasons, you could do incredible things. You have enough intelligence, but not enough reason. That's the key, if you had enough reason. In my years of study, I've also discovered this. Reasons come first and answers come second. Life has a strange way of hiding all the answers and disclosing them only to people who have been inspired to look for them, who have reasons to look for them. Put another way, when you know what you want and you want it badly enough, you will find ways to get it. The answers, the methods, the solutions will become evident to you. Hey, what if you had to be rich? Are there any books and tapes on the subject? The answer is yes. There are plenty of good ones. But if you don't have to be rich, you probably won't read the books or listen to the tape. What drives us to find the answers is necessity. So work on your reasons first, answers second. Now, what are some of the reasons for doing well? It varies from person to person. I'm sure that if you did a little soul searching, you could come up with a fairly strong list of reasons why you want to accomplish great things. There are personal reasons, sometimes uniquely personal reasons. Some people do well for the recognition. Some do well because of the way it makes them feel. They love the feeling of being a winner. That's one of the best reasons. My mom this morning knew I wasn't feeling good. She goes, honey, do you need to cancel that talk? I'm like, mom, I can't cancel on these people. It's like, you work so hard. Why does it matter? I go, mom, I'm helping them. She goes, oh, then you need to go because they're about service. Okay, so in your life, I'll go a little bit, a little bit more here, you guys. In your life, if you combine understanding your mess can be repurposed understanding I'm just like you understanding the RAS understanding changing your identity understand bending time you have a shot combined with this industry combined with the information you're getting but if you don't change your identity do you know how many people I've had as friends that got wealthy that aren't anymore more than I have that are still wealthy. do you know how many friends I have who lost a lot of weight and got in shape and aren't in shape anymore? do you know how many friends I have that had a great relationship and marriage that aren't in that relationship or marriage does this sound familiar to me? You want to know why? Their internal thermostat and all that crap back. I ain't going back. I know where I am. I got to change that thermostat. By the way, you change the thermostat for your association. Change the thermostat. By the way, associations read books, follow them on social media, listen to their podcasts, their audios, all that stuff. Subscribe to my podcast. It's on iTunes. Listen to my YouTube. It's all free. I don't tell you. I make no money. This is work. My podcast costs me about a million dollars. I do it to help you. I'm here today to help you. I was paid to be here today, but it's one of the only things I do to get paid anymore to help you. I'm here to help you. I'm here to change your life. I spent the first 45 years of my life building my legacy and my dream and I want to spend the second half helping other people build there. I feel like it's my calling and my mission in my life is to help people. It's sort of my form of ministry. I trickle God in there just a little bit but not enough to be offensive. I give people the tools, skills, and inspiration to do it. I want to change the world. I want a billion people to change their lives and be a force for good. And let me explain to you why. I think the world is more screwed up and divided than it's ever been in the history of mankind. You're either a Democrat or a liberal or a Republican or a this or a that or black against white. If you In our country right now, evidently if you're a white male, your enemy are are brown people who are coming across our border, right? If that's not your enemy, then if you're a Christian, your enemy is a Muslim. If that's not your enemy, then if you're black, your enemy is white privileged male, right? By the way, really your enemy, if they're a Christian, white privileged, successful, married male, then they're really bad guys, right? And what we do is we enemy each other constantly in this world. We're more divided than we've ever been. People are broke, they're struggling, they wanna blame somebody. The bottom line is people don't like their lives. They're not happy with their lives, they're looking for someone to blame. Politicians, Trump, and Obama, I don't care who you like, they're both incredible at getting you to subtly blame someone else for your conditions. You know the confidants and every person, not just every leader, every person needs a few confidants in your life with whom you can be transparent and then you won't be so lonely all the time. This man is in cave because there's nobody walking with him. There's nobody who's got his rhythm. There's nobody who's got his pace. And then there are constituents. Constituents. And this is the vast majority. This is a big category of what happened in church. Constituents are distinctly different from confidants. Confidants are for you. Constituents are for what you are for. They line up with the cause. They're called to the cause. They join your church because you feed homeless people. They join your church because of your foreign missions. They join your church because you're going to heaven. They join your church because you believe in faith and you teach the word. They join your church. They are not for you now. They are not for you. They are for what you are for. They're going your way. They are for what you're for. What's the highway we came in on? What's the number? I-5. You're, you're on I-5. 
They're on I-5. You're going in the same direction they're going your way. They are for what you are for. They're not for you. And you have to understand that because they're attracted to the direction you're going in. But if they see a car that will get them there quicker, they will leave you because they were never for you. They were for where you were going. And if somebody else can get them there quicker than you, they will hop out of your car and dive into their car and go down the road because they were never attracted to you. They were attracted to your direction. And these are constituents. They are for what you are for. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's nothing wrong with that until you mistake a constituent for an orthodox. And you have a personal relationship with a public person and you think they are there for you and they were never there for you. You. They were there for what you were for. And then there are comrades. The third category is comrades. Now, comrades are not for you, and they are not for what you are for. They are just against what you are against. They're comrades. They are attracted to you because you have a common enemy, and they will be with you as long as the fight exists. But when the fight is over, they are gone. It's like the past election. I'm going to be very careful because we get in politics, we'll all be fighting. Uh, in, in the past election, when, when McCain and, and Hillary Clinton got together to attack Obama. McCain and Clinton wouldn't get together about nothing except they were both against Obama. Sometimes people only join you because you have a common enemy. They're comrades. They're with you in the struggle. And in the trenches, they're wearing your uniform. But when the fighting stops, you will be attacked in your own foxhole. If you bring a comrade too close to you, when your comrade gets through shooting at who you're shooting at, they will shoot you because they were never for you and they were never for what you were for they were just against what you were against you'd be surprised at the people who fight against stuff just all kinds of stuff abortions same sex marriage all kinds of stuff they're, they're against the same stuff but they're not for each other they join together in the fight you as a leader have to know why people hooked up with you because if you misallocate a person into the wrong category you will be broken hearted and wounded and end up in the cave because you thought a constituent was a confidant thought a comrade was a constituent when the fight was over they got shot in your own foxhole and I don't care what you hear about on TV there is no such thing as friendly fire a bullet is a bullet where in the all fire bulimity did we get friendly fire from get closer uh, <laughs> friendly fire there is no friendly fire you shot me what is a friendly bullet a bullet going your hand in saying I like you you know Woo, you know, what's up with that? Because success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. Who's with me on this, right? You make everybody else feel great. I mean, it's a horrible example. I hate it, but we all know an extraordinary spirit that took his own life just recently. Probably lit up more human beings than almost anybody alive when it comes to humor and joy. He made everybody else feel happy but himself. It's sad. You don't want that to be you. If there's any gift he can give besides his joy is the evidence of what you don't want to move towards. Nobody in this room is going to move towards that, but we do it at a little level. We die a little bit along the way by giving up what we really desire and believe in. And my goal is to make sure to see if we can wake that up. So, and by the way, fulfillment is as unique as there are people. Achievement, there's laws, right? You do this, this. Money, there are laws. Your body, there's laws. We all have biochemical, special, unique identities, but there's certain fundamentals. If you do them in mass, you're going to be overweight. If you do them differently, you're going to be fit and strong. Same thing with money. But fulfillment is as unique as art. Art is what one person thinks is beautiful, somebody else can think is ugly, and that's perfectly fine. Have you ever gone to an art museum and you see this big red square and they go ten million dollars you go you gotta be kidding me ten million dollars for that freaking square i'll draw you a square but someone else no look at the texture the, the taste the flavor i can taste the paint from here they have a different way of being fulfilled, right? So those are the two kind of lessons of life. So this is what I'd like to do to help you with both those today, if you want to play with Number one, let's take a look at what will give you the edge. Who's up for having a competitive edge in anything you do? Say, I. And it's not BS and it's not positive thinking. It's something you can test because the edge is what's going to get more out of you. Second, I'd like to show you how to create a breakthrough. Who here has an area of your life where there's something you've struggled with for a while and you're sick of struggling with it and you're sick of making excuses you want to actually change it today? Who's got one of those in your life? Say, I. If you want to play full out, I can show you that. And the third element really affects the other two, and it's really the one that affects business and life, and that's the power of engagement. All of these are tied to engagement.